Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. <laughs> Judy, look what I have. Ah, and Ryan, look what I have. We'll explain about the significance of these plants next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time, and this is Portuguese Laurel. And this is Spanish Lavender, and it's just a reminder of the Garden Time tour coming this October to Spain and Portugal. Europe is opening up, and Garden Time will be there. So if you're interested, check out the link on the Garden Time tours on our website. Coming up in the show today, we'll be at Garland Nursery talking with Lee about plants that do well in the sun and in the shade. We'll also show you how they make more rhododendrons from cuttings. But coming up first, we'll show you some native trees for your landscape. I am surrounded by a woodland, beautiful place. I'm at Bosque Dells with Lori, and Lori, I love coming here because you feel like you're in a woodland, but I'm really in a city, so it's really a nice respite here. Good, thank you. That's exactly what we were aiming for. And I love coming because you have all these vignettes um, to show people how to plant um, in their gardens to create that kind of look. And so today we're going to talk about trees that are kind of like the bones of that little vignette. So okay. what do you have there? This is Western Red Cedar. This is referred to oftentimes as the tree of life. It ultimately is a really large conifer. It's great for privacy from a neighbor's house or erosion control. A wildlife benefit from it and it's beautiful too. <laughs> it is nice, that is so pretty. And then this one has got all this new growth, it's so beautiful. This, this is the western hemlock and it's another conifer that gets really big and once again it's great for privacy and for wildlife. In the base of it we have a sword fern, that's how you would often see it growing in the real world. And um, you can do a combination of these trees uh, along the edge of your property if you have enough room to create a, an amazing privacy screen. That is nice and it's something that you would see on a hike if you were out in the rural areas and the woodland areas of Oregon. Yeah, you would. It's exactly what you would see. And some of us though have smaller gardens so really you have a tree that could fit in a smaller space. Well another tree I really enjoy landscaping with is the mountain hemlock. So it's in the same family as the western hemlock but its growth habit is the exact opposite. It's sort of like nature's bonsai. It grows about a quarter to a half an inch a year. So when you do purchase one, you actually want to get one that's about the size you want it to be. They're really beautiful in groupings of some odd number where you stagger the height. Um, they're often used for prominent spots like the entrance to your house or the backdrop of a pond. Um, but they're really f a lot of fun to landscape with. And they always have some interesting shapes to them. Sometimes they have little kind of just angles to them. And I really love that look because it just looks even more natural. Well, one person may look at a tree <laughs> and say, oh, that is magnificent. But another person might look at the same tree and say, that's that Charlie Brown tree. I don't know what you see in that. So the beauty is truly really in the eye of the beholder. I too like the ones that are gnarly and look like they have a story to tell. Um, but, but uh, it's, it's so true. Everyone has a different idea. Yeah. Very true. But they're really beautiful trees. Definitely. And so we've been talking about conifers, but here is a maple. So really there's um, all kinds of trees. So available. this is uh, our native vine maple. And technically it's a shrub, although I think of it as being tree-like because its mature height is 25 to 30 feet tall. And it's often, but not always, multi-trunked and it too can offer a tremendous amount of privacy and it stays quite a lot smaller than these larger conifers so if you don't have enough room for a conifer a vine maple could be a good choice for both beauty and privacy they also have beautiful fall color oranges yeah. and reds in the fall um, but nine months out of the year it can give you complete privacy from your neighbor's house yeah, it really is a nice plant to have and having a multi-stem tree is really something different to have too. Plus you can prune it 
to fit your space as well. So if it grows a little bit too far one direction or another, you can just selectively give it a haircut. Ah, well, you, as you can tell, Lori is a font of information and knowledge, and this place is just so beautiful to come to. So please go to gardentime.tv and click over to their website and come out to Bosquedel and see all these beautiful trees. Thanks so much. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, where our passion for plants has kept us rooted in this incredible community. A lot has changed since we first opened our doors, but through it all, we've remained family owned and operated, dedicated to providing our neighbors the largest selection of the highest quality plants Portland has to offer. With hundreds of new plants arriving each week, you're guaranteed to find something exciting and unique. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Surround yourself with wonderful color this summer. It's time for the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Hydrangeas are the perfect plant for any garden, large or small. We are cleaning out our nursery, so come and take some plants home to your garden. We're offering special, once a year pricing on nearly everything we grow. Also, check out our selection of grasses and other blooming perennials. It's the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. I'm at Garland's Nursery with Lee Powell. And Lee, you always have such interesting plants. And this is a collection of kind of specific plants for a specific area. Yes, so we chose plants that will grow in the full sun, but will also grow in the shade. Cool. Um, and as a landscape architect, I'm constantly doing designs where it's a new landscape. You plant a tree. What can you plant under it that's going to do well in the sun, but then also once it gets shade, it'll still do well. Right. So I, I chose these plants. I think we've got a good grouping. Some do a little better with some shade. Mm -hmm. Some do a little better with some sun. But with if you take some precautions, you can get them to grow in either. So just watch the water. The water would be the key thing sure. for the shade plants. Mm -hmm. You know, once in they the get sun. in the hot sun, they usually require a little more to keep them looking nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's good because everyone has that kind of issue. It's like it's sunny and then it's not. And so. I think you picked a good a good idea here. Excellent. Excellent. Glad to hear it. <laughs> so start on your side there. All right. So I've got first a grass. This is Carl Forrester feather reed grass. And it gets like four or five feet tall, nice. sends up plumes. It's actually starting to send them up right now. Early. Yeah. And then uh, it'll look fantastic. Uh, it'll turn buff color in the fall. It will uh, look good until probably Christmas time is usually when I cut mine down. Gets nice. about five or six feet tall. It's deer resistant, nice. fairly drought resistant. Pretty good, tough, all-round plant. Excellent, excellent. Um, next, I have a hydrangea. This one is called Strawberry Shake. Cool. And it's a panicle-style hydrangea that's going to have white flowers that turn a tinge of pink to them. It's one of those that isn't going to want to be in a spot that's between a sidewalk and a south-facing wall of a house. Mm -hmm. It takes full sun, but that's a little bit too much too full much. sun. And it will require quite a bit of water in the summer to get it to, to go through. But it, the blooms from midsummer all the way to frost. Ah, uh, that is nice. It's nice to have that shape and color. Absolutely. This is a native. I thought I'd throw a native in here. Uh, Oregon grape, our state flower. And it'll grow in anything from full sun to full shade, super drought resistant, deer resistant, uh, just a tough as nails plant that uh, looks pretty nice year round. Wonderful. And then another, another shrub here, this is such a pretty green. And this is a holly, but no pointy leaves. Nice. It's a Japanese holly. 
And we have one of these planted out here at the nursery in full shade and it still looks fantastic. It will be a little looser in the shade as far as the, the habit than it is in the sunshine. But uh, really tough, durable plant, takes the place of a boxwood and looks a little more natural, but ties things together all season long. Nice, nice. And then a beautiful foxglove. Foxgloves are a great plant for sun and shade. They're a biennial, so they bloom every other year. Um, this one's called Arctic Fox Rose, which is kind of a new, newer variety with a cool color. It's mm -hmm. got the pink, but a little bit of an apricot color inside the blossom. Nice, nice. Yeah. And this is such an interesting texture of, of colors there. Yes, that is a fleece flower. And there are a number of them that will grow in shade or sun. This one is called, and I will look really quickly, Red Dragon. Fantastic burgundy color. It's another one that will need a little more water if you're putting it in the full sun. All right. And columbines, it's still columbine time. Yes, they're kind of on the edge of their time to flower, but quite often, you know, you'll cut them back, they'll bloom again, and they will grow in the sun or the shade. In the full hot sun, the plant looks a little worse for wear as you get into summer. Right. But it will bloom and you know, once it starts looking bad, you can just cut it off nice. and, you know, it'll come back next year. Excellent. And then the last one here. And full card geranium. So this is a hardy geranium. Looks a lot different from the traditional geraniums. Right. And these will grow in sun or shade. They get a little more gold colored in the sun. And in the shade, they're going to be a little more chartreuse. It does spread out quite a bit. Um, but it makes a, a fantastic garden plant. Oh, it is, it's such a great color. We went through so many great plants. You always pick out a great collection and you have so many nice plants here at Garland Nursery. Yes. <laughs> and I know in a couple weeks, Ryan is gonna be with you and talking about some more plants. So we're just gonna do a tea so you, sh you tune in then to see Lee again with more shrubs in just a few weeks. But please come on down to Garland Nursery and see what you can bring home to your house. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> So if you have problems with ants in your yard or in your garden, we have a few products here that we found here out at Al's in Wilsonville. The first couple I'll show you here are these two are both a granular and these are designed to go outside. What you'll do is you'll kind of sprinkle a perimeter around your house. What that does is as the ants try to go into, into your house, they'll come across the bait, they'll eat the bait and then they take it back out to, your, out to their nest where they'll, where they'll die. And so sometimes we have ants in our home in the springtime or in the fall when they're very active. And so this one by Taro is actually a trap. And so these little plastic containers have a borax based um, liquid in them. So you just have to pop off this end and the ants actually go in and if they come out again, they'll bring it back to their nest. And you just reapply these as needed. But you could put them in your house and just make sure that the children or pets don't go near it. This other product is from Bonide, and as you can see, it has that tan shoulder, so it means that it's from natural products. And actually, it's made out of plant-based products. So you could spray this in your home, in your kitchen, where you live, and it will keep the ants away, and you don't have to worry about it being in your home. So if you have problems with ants in your garden or in your home, make sure you come out to Al's in Wilsonville or any of your other independent garden centers and pick up a product like this to take care of your house. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite, but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete, too. 
from bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears, and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney. We have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden, deck, or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook, too. For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal, and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. So sometimes horticulture terms are just a little confusing. So I'm with Jan McNeilan, so who knows everything? No. <laughs> a lot of it. And so if you can kind of run us through different terms for herbaceous plants, and so maybe we can start with annuals. Annuals are like marigolds, petunias, lobelia, all of the stuff that normally we used to only put in hanging pots and flower beds, and now pots are mixes of annuals and perennials. Um, but it's, these are the ones that are more tender when it's cold in the spring. So if, I think we could get away with it now, but right. if I would have planted those a week or two ago, they would sit in the cold soil and turn purple because they can't take up the nutrients that are in the soil. But that's an annual. In one year, it completes its life cycle, dies off, and that's the end of that one. And when you mean life cycle, so it, it grows green leaves, it flowers, goes to seed, and then by the end of the season it dies. Yes, yes, you can, and a lot of things you can save seed, especially marigolds, right. and start the process again the following year. All right, so then we go to perennial, what's that? A perennial is a plant that um, will live season after season. This is a sage plant. I mean, it's gonna, I put it in and it's gonna stay there and grow and get bigger. And sometimes maybe a hard winter is gonna kill off a perennial, but most of the time it comes back. Some of them are more or less evergreen like this is, but some of them are like deciduous and die back down to the ground, but come up again. Okay. Just like there's a, a, a sage over here, J Jerusalem sage, it's not really a sage, but. Um, that one comes back every year. It's come back from some really hard freezes and still flowers and looks looks really good. And it still will set seed. It yes. still does that life cycle. Yes. But then it's kind of perpetual. It comes right. back every right. year. Right, right. And then there's something in between an right. annual and a perennial called a biennial. And that one's kind of confusing. A biennial takes two seasons to complete its life cycle. So one season is the plant itself and the next season is the flower. And then it seeds itself, and then the next season after that, the third year, uh, then those seeds germinate, and you get another plant that takes another year to have the flower. So it's, uh, it takes, the by part is two seasons to like a foxglove. And there's a, a number of biennials that are out there that um, so if you read it, you'll know it's going to take you two seasons to get the flowers. Unless you buy it in the pot already flowering, then that's fine. But you're not going to get a flower from that plant the following year. Right, right. And so you want that one to go to seed. You want yeah. to kind of spread it around and so you right. make that cycle go again. Right. Ah, I think you've made it so much easier to really kind of call it out. We kind of throw these terms out and then we don't explain them. And I think that's part of the confusion. So we hope that you've learned something for this little bit of um, tips about annuals, perennials, and biennials. Thanks so much, Jan. See ya. Springtime is a great time to clean and disinfect and sharpen your tools. But really any time of the year is a great time to do that because gardening is so much easier with clean and sharp tools. So the first thing you want to do is get some kind of a disinfectant. I'm using um, ammonia and water and I'm spraying it on this tool. And then I'm just going to get a paper towel 
And so this is a great way to get off any kind of dirt and grime and also if there's any diseases that are on this tool head. And then I have some coarse steel wool and I'm even going to take off even more grit and grime and even there's a little bit of rust on here and it'll take that rust spot right off. And now and then, I'm giving it to you. And now once we have it, you know, kind of cleaned and disinfected, we we'll want to kind of sharpen the blades. So a lot of times we'll use either like a WD-40 or a three-in-one oil or a honing oil. What that will do is kind of will help lubricate while we're sealing. So we're going to use just a regular old file on here. We sprayed a little bit of WD-40 on here, so we can just kind of sharpen this edge. And then we can kind of also do this, the other side here. You know, and this is a pretty straight edge on here. But sometimes we'll have like a pair of pruners that have a curved edge on one side and flat on the other. We don't want to sand off or file off this side. We want to make sure that we do, th do the curved side on here. So once again, we'll put a little WD-40 on here. Just kind of help lubricate it a little bit. And we'll just file this down until we get a nice sharp edge on there. Just kind of following the angle that's already there. And then once we get the angle on there as sharp as we want to, we'll spray it down with the WD-40 or the oil. What that'll do is kind of help seal it, lubricate it, and prevent further rusting. So cleaning, disinfecting, and sharpening your tools, it's a great thing to do any time of the year. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. At Capital Subaru, we are family. It's not all about selling cars here. It's about our community and our families. We keep you moving. With a Subaru, it's always, what are you going to do next? And with our new space, we'll get you service faster than ever before. And we are growing. With over 72,000 square feet and 30 new service space. Our new location is opening later this spring. I can't wait. It's a new year, and it's going to be awesome. At Capital Subaru, we are your way on the parkway. What are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh, man. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the gardentime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonite has the answer. Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew controls most common garden insects and is derived from a naturally occurring bacteria to help with your organic gardening. It's safe to use even on fruits and vegetables. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. I'm with Dr. Tom Smiley from Bartlett Tree Experts, and you're from the Research Lab. Correct. I'm from the Bartlett Tree Research Laboratory, working in the Pacific Northwest. Excellent. And so, well, we just had this huge ice event 
in February. And so, you know, many, many of us had so much problems and so much tree damage, shrub damage from that. And so, you know, here we are in this allay um, and there was a lot of damage, wasn't there? There sure was, and it's still persisting till today. Yeah, and so here it looks like they just kind of took the limbs that were damaged, took them back, and they're so beautiful. I mean, look at all the new growth, which is really encouraging. Absolutely, so we have to make some choices on what to keep and what to cut. Uh, and the trees will respond uh, to some degree. The question is, will they be safe into the future? Uh. And that's part of our decision-making process. So that's probably the first question. So you get a call out, I have this tree that's damaged. So really a safety concern. Absolutely, yes. There are a lot of hazards still out there that we need to identify and take care of as soon as we can so nobody gets hurt. Oh, definitely. Uh, and then after that, we have a little more time to make our decisions. Like these trees, they'll respond. They're sprouting back, which is really great to see. But we may not like the aesthetics of the broken <laughs> branches right. here, uh, so we can still make a lot of our decisions moving forward, uh, how far to cut back, what to cut back, uh, and again, is the tree strong enough uh, to put out new branches? And these are doing great. Uh. They're, they're looking really good. So that's really a conversation between your experts and the homeowners. Absolutely, yeah. The homeowner needs to be involved in that. Some like the aesthetics, some hate the aesthetics. Uh, so it, it, that's a big determinant in uh, guiding the pruning process. Uh -huh. So I'm a homeowner and so I have damage to my tree. So what questions should I be asking though? Okay, well we might want to start out with how much damage is there in a tree. So if it's less than 50%, you know, there's a good chance that that tree will survive, and if it's vigorous before the storm, uh, it can do pretty well. But if, if we're at 80% uh, damage, there's a good chance you'll want to take it out. Then the other one is safety, and again, we're especially worried about uh, broken hanging branches. So if it's already detached from the tree but still hanging up there, and some may just be teetering, uh, and those could come down at any time. So we really need to get those out if there's something that they could impact if they were to fall. So if it's under a path or a road, uh, those are important to get out there. And then we look for things like cracks. If there are cracks in the tree, uh, that indicates that it, it has started to fail. And the question is, when is it gonna finish failing? Uh, and again, those uh, typically are things that we need to get out earlier. Uh, and then it goes to the aesthetics sure. after that. Mm -hmm. So we start with safety, move to aesthetics. Right, and really as a homeowner, I'm not experienced with this. I don't yes. own a chainsaw, so really calling in an expert is probably the best idea to do. Absolutely, and it, you, you, a couple of things. One, you don't want to make it worse yeah. by doing the wrong cuts, too mm -hmm. much cutting. Uh, and the other is, again, safety. You know, working off a ladder is very dangerous. Working with chainsaws is dangerous. Uh, after a typical big storm, two or three times Times more people are killed and injured after the storm than during the storm. Uh, so leave the big stuff to the professionals. Small stuff that you can reach from standing on the ground, uh, not reaching far overhead. Yes, that's fine, but, but big stuff, leave for the professionals, oh, please. Yes, definitely, because yeah. we want to be safe. We Absolutely. want to save our trees, but we want to be safe too. Yes. Well, I think gathering all from all this information Dr. Smiley has given us, it's like we want to be safe. So if it's a small project, it's small damage, of course you could try to do it, but do it safely. If it's a little bigger damage to that tree, you'd want to call in the experts. And certainly Bartlett Tree Experts are a great company, and you could get that information through the Garden Time website, or you can go directly to their website. Thanks so much, Dr. Smiley. Thank you. Now that our spring bulbs have died down and the foliage is kind of starting to disappear, we want to mark where those bulbs are for the summertime because you know, how many times have we been in there and dug up in our yard to plant something in the summer and up comes a bunch of bulbs. So our good tip is to take a rock, write on the rock what it is that's planted underneath it and just set that rock in your garden and now you know where your bulbs are for next year. And that is our tip of the week. It's time for a plant adventure. 
Come visit the nurseries of the Cascade Nursery Trail, a collection of independent specialty nurseries full of wonderful plants that deserve a visit. Find the cure for your spring fever at our Spring Fever Open House. Enjoy three days of garden touring and plant sales. We'll even help you find the perfect plant, or two. Start your perfect plant safari at CascadeNurseryTrail.com. For 95 years and four generations, Shriners Gardens has been hybridizing and growing award-winning iris. With the largest selection available, Shriners Gardens online catalog hosts hundreds of varieties from classic bearded iris, reblooming and fragrant iris, dwarf iris, and more. Also available online, hybrid daylilies. Shriners Gardens, bringing a rainbow of color to gardens everywhere since 1935. Online at ShrinersGardens.com. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. I am at Van Veen Heritage Gardens and Nursery and we're in a propagation house so you might see some moisture on the lens here and that is because we are in a humid rich environment. I'm with Mike and Mike this is a really old kind of old time kind of propagation place. Yes it is. This, this house was built 70 some years ago. The Dutch style house was kind of sunken in and we have some of those houses still here at the nursery but yeah this is the original the original bottom heat. Of course we're, we're, we have hot water heat now but Originally, Theodore Van Veen was building these when the Bonneville Dam was being constructed. Uh, Bonneville Power was offering lots of cheap electricity, <laughs> so he kind of invented, in a way, along with some other nursery people, the bottom heat system. And uh, it revolutionized uh, rooted cuttings on plants. It really did. It, it sped things way, way up. Yeah, and you know, we've gone uh, so much forward because now things are made in test tubes, but really there's something to say about making cuttings in soil. I mean, that is, I mean, that's gardening. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you talk about test tube roots. This is what a real rooted <laughs> rhododendron looks like in real soil. And that's something that Van Veen's have been famous for for many, many years. Uh, when you read back through the critics, uh, you know, comments that come in from customers, oh, what did I get? Right. You, can, you can't imagine the size of cutting. So this is what something we, root, we rooted from a Varea cutting uh, about eight months ago, and they're ready to, pot up. Wow. Yeah. And so eight months ago you took a piece from a mother stock or a, a mature yeah, plant? We took a cutting just like that and this is all new growth that's happened since wow. then. So this thing this thing started off so that thing. high right? and this is what's pushing in this greenhouse. We'll probably cut this off and make it branch out so it's two or three branches but uh, yeah it's uh, they really in the right environment with the the knowledge that the crew that's uh, been here many many years so they can really produce some good things. That is cool. And so we're going to go on to another house to see that yeah. next stage of production. Get out of this humidity. Okay, good deal. So Mike, I can see why the Vareas are so popular. The color spectrum is amazing. Yes, it is. And the size of flower is amazing as well. Some of those tubular flowers will get out to be six or eight inches long. Wow. And then you have the little tiny dwarf things as well. Just a tremendous range in, in that uh, species. So to get back to the propagation, so you came here in this house about eight months ago and took cuttings. So if you could just kind of show us what, well, you, what you took. Sure, we would have taken this new growth like this right at the termination of the 
of prior growth and we would have taken the cutting and we would have scarred it down into the cambium layer with a sharp knife by the way we would have cut it all and a lot of times if the leaves are really big we'll cut about half of them off just to slow down the transpiration demand of the plant and um, and we put a, a little harmadin, it's called, a, a powder on it uh, that makes them root a little easier. And we stick them in warm soil, keep them moist, and you'd be amazed what happens in just a couple of months. Yeah, we yeah. did. That was just amazing. Yeah. And so if we're interested in these plants, how do we go about that? Well, you'd call, you would look at our website, Van Veen Nursery website, and the, uh, that website with this availability is just coming up soon. Or call the office, the number will be there. Um, and talk to Jake, is the guy who takes <laughs> orders in the office, and he'll he'll fix you up with some rayas. Uh, and there's also volunteer opportunities here, isn't there? Aren't there? Oh, there is. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a little tougher working in a greenhouse in the summertime, but when it's <laughs> raining, if you feel like coming into a beautiful place where it's warm and you can hear the rain outside, but not on you, <laughs> you can come in. There'll always be a weed or something to pick out, and um, it's kind of a fun thing. Bring a partner on the other side of the greenhouse and. Uh, it's it's a nice experience. Yeah, and it's wonderful to be surrounded about around beautiful plants and to learn something and to be a part of this historical garden that has just been saved for our future in Portland area. So if you have any other questions, please go to Garden Time. You can click over to their websites and see all about the Rhododendron Society. That's a wonderful um, society to belong to and about volunteer opportunities and about plants to buy. Thanks so much, Mike. You're welcome. Thanks again for coming. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit five, east of Salem. Ryan, you need to brush up your look. Ryan, that is better. It's always better when you show off your Garden Time pride. Check out the Garden Time store on our webpage for a great selection of Garden Time gifts and apparel. Choose a hoodie, shirt, hat, bag, or mask for yourself or as a gift for the Garden Time fan in your life. See the complete selection on the Garden Time website. Pick up some Garden Time gear and show your Garden Time pride. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Garden Time is on the road again. Join us as we tour Portugal and Spain in the fall of 2021. We start in Lisbon where we tour the palaces and gardens of royalty. Then we make our way across Spain with visits to the Mesquita and the world-famous Alhambra. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Andalusia before we end up in exciting Madrid. Local transportation, hotels, and 26 of your meals are included. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. When we're out at the Leach Botanical Gardens, I'm with Virginia. Virginia, it's been a couple years since we've been out here, and there have been a lot of changes. There have been a been lot here. of changes, yes. We have just had a large enhancement project, a big construction project, um, that has doubled our cultivated garden space. We have a new welcome plaza here, where we are welcoming, people used to come in at the manor house gates below, and now they come in up top through a welcome plaza and then through a three season pollinator garden and up where uh, when they first come in, they see this beautiful pollinator garden spread out before them. And then the covered terrace, which leads out onto the aerial tree walk here. Um, that's a pretty amazing thing for people. And yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's a pretty cool looking, looking walkway. Though. Right, it takes them 30 feet up into the air. They can really hear the birds. They can see the trees, um, you know, up close. And then just the texture and the colors up there are really something. Um, at certain times of the year, you can see down to Johnson Creek uh, from there, depending on the foliage. 
and you can also get a great view of the manor house, uh, the historic manor house. Right, and you know, and as we're you know all looking to get out outdoors and and go experience you know places, you know, this is just right in our backyard. It sure is, is, yeah. You know, and so when when people come out to the gardens, to uh, what should they expect when they when they come out here? Well, um, it's it's they should expect a peaceful place. It's really peaceful. You just just feel a kind of calmness and a quiet and a respite. Um, so when you first arrive, again, we have a new welcome uh, plaza and new parking, um, probably about double the parking that we had before. But uh, most people, sh if you've been here before, you'll want to know that the new entrance is on Cl Southeast Claiborne Street. Okay. Um, so that's a whole new entrance to the garden. Um, and then you come through and um, we do have limited parking, even though we have more parking. So it's really good to make an advanced reservation. We have time ticketing right now and admission is waived, but we, we, do, re we do recommend making an advanced reservation so that you can come when you want to come. And so, you know, right next to us, we have this great pavilion spot with a, with a fireplace area. So, you know, can people rent out the space? Absolutely, yes. And people have always rented Leach Botanical Garden, mostly down at the Manor House and the East Terrace. But now we have this covered arbor and the fireplace terrace and the tree walk. And so I would encourage people to get in touch with our rental coordinator. She can give you all the information you need to have a beautiful ceremony and reception or business meeting or just a you know, family celebration. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful spot for it. You know, and we're not wearing our masks right now. We're keeping separate, but when yeah. When people come out, you you want them to wear masks? We do ask that they wear masks just because we don't know who is vaccinated and who is not. And um, it, it just makes everybody feel more comfortable to be in certain, even though there's a lot of space and people can kind of feel outdoors, there are some congested areas at times. Some of the paths are more narrow. It just feels makes everybody feel much more safe to right. have their masks on. And you on. talked about, you know, there's a, a bunch of new, new planting areas and new mm -hmm. gardens. So I think we're going to head over and talk to Adam about okay. some of the new plantings yeah, and we'll that's check great. those out. All right, thanks. So now I'm with Adam, and he's the head horticultural manager out here at the, at the gardens. And Adam, you have some really new beds that are all themed. Yeah, we've added many new garden spaces uh, with the expansion. Right now we're standing pretty much in between two of them. Uh, in front of me is our new pollinator garden, and behind me is our woodland hillside. The woodland hillside is a collection of all uh, Portland native plants, uh, so they're grouped in large groupings so that as you're walking on the aerial tree walk as you look below you can see these large groups of all native plants. Pollinator garden is a mix of natives and non-natives um, all great pollinators believe it or not for insects uh, food for birds and the design of that is uh, things are in bands in the spring you'll see rings and bands as things flower as spring ends and summer comes in, uh, instead of being bands, it becomes waves and the colors change from cool spring to really bold summer colors. It's a really interesting design. Right. And off in the distance, uh, over beyond our entrance, uh, we have a Southeast collection. It's all Southeast United States native trees and shrubs as well. Well, it's, you know, so many, you know, different areas of the garden. It's, it's very educational. It is. A huge focus for us here at Leach is to educate. So we, we have a lot of school groups that come out and uh, just the general public as well. We, we want people, people to be able to learn something while they're here. You know, in addition to being beautiful, uh, we're trying to uh, teach kids about horticulture, about uh, ecosystems and restoration work. So we have, you know, this uh, pollinator garden here that's a mix of natives and non-natives. We have other areas where it's all natives and our intention is to have school groups come out and learn all about all the differences and uh, get their hands dirty. Right. You know, with all the expansion, you've had these, you know, great new beds, but it's also accessible. It is. Uh, for anybody that had been to the garden before, you probably know that the garden's on a pretty significant slope and a lot of the areas were not accessible. So with this expansion, there was a big push to create many more areas that are accessible to anybody with mobility issues. So where we're standing now from the entrance here, everything is on grade accessible. And that includes being able to walk out onto our tree walk, which again, totally accessible. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, we're right here in the city and it's just in everybody's backyard and there's so much that we can learn while we're out there, you know. So make sure you come on out to the, you know, Leach Botanical Gardens. There are so many new changes, so many new beds. You guys have done a great job, you know, building this up and expanding it and there's still more to come. There is, thank yeah. you. 
So make sure you go to Leach Botanical Garden or to go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website on how to come out and enjoy this great space. Many of you have been out to your independent garden center this spring and you may have noticed it's a little bit harder to find some plants. So we have some tips for you to make your shopping more successful. The first one is if you see a plant that you love, buy it right now because it may not be there the next time you visit. You know, and a lot of nurseries get their plant shipments midweek, either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So if you go shopping just before the weekend, you'll avoid some crowds and may find the best selection. And if you can't find that plant that you really want, you may want to find one that has similar interest or similar care and substitute that one. We hope these tips allow you to be more successful on your next plant hunting expedition. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. There's nothing more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis. And your chance to see the Queen of Vines is at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farm. Come celebrate Memorial Day in the garden on Saturday, May 29th between 10 and 2. There's a plant sale, potting demonstrations, garden tours, and even a raffle. Every garden deserves to have a clematis. To learn more about the garden and all of its many activities, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle, develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Hey everybody, this is Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden and I am always excited to share with you some of the new plants that we're growing at the farm for you at home in your garden. This is a brand new series of dahlias. They're called Mega Blooms and you can see why. This is the very first one in the series and it's called Berry Blast. These beautiful kind of berry colored foliage with the white stripes through it, absolutely beautiful. One of the things that makes this one different is you can see it has this really nice compact habit, but the blooms bloom just right over the top of the foliage. So you get these giant mega blooms sitting right on top of this beautiful compact habit. The plant is technically a perennial in our area, but to be sure that you get this to come back each year, I remind people to dig up those bulbs in the fall because a lot of times our wet winters cause them all to rot. That's one sure way to make sure that it comes back. But this is only one I have to share for you today. Let me show you another one. All right, so this doesn't look too exciting right now, but trust me, this is a brand new series of Delphinium. They're called Delphinium del Genus. It is genius because these ones, believe it or not, Delphiniums are hard to grow in a greenhouse setting. There's not a lot of luck. When you get home as a gardener, sometimes they come back, sometimes they do. This series is hardy down to zone four, which means it's even hardy in Eastern Oregon. And you'll see it's super sturdy. This is gonna shend up giant stalks of blossoms with multiple ones coming off of every single plant. These aren't blooming yet, but I pulled a couple photos for you because 
Honestly, I just couldn't wait. They are so good, they are so beautiful. Now is the time to head down to the garden. We have them available right now. There's three different colors, and these are going to be spectacular in your garden this summer. For these introductions and a whole bunch more, come down to the farm and see us. We look forward to seeing you really soon. And to stay up on all of those new introductions, make sure you check out our YouTube page and subscribe for all the cool things that are coming for your garden this year. Well, we're down here at Goodwill, I'm with Dale. Dale, we don't typically think of a Goodwill Center as for gardening, but it is actually an excellent place to come down and garden. Right, we get a little bit of everything. We get a lot of everything, actually. Um, last year, even in a COVID year, we received more than 177 million pounds just in our area, Northwest Oregon, Central Oregon, and Southwest Washington. Where we are in particular, and these are some great examples of everything. I, I found everything here, by the way. Where we are in particular is an outlet often called the bins okay. by the locals. It's where you have dozens and dozens of tables, nine feet long, holding 150 to 250 pounds of like items. It's here by the pound. And the more pounds in your cart, the better it is for you. Over right. 25 pounds, you get a substantial discount. Or it's by the piece. You'll find those things at deep, deep discount. This is the last place for the public to go when they're looking for a Goodwill item. Okay. It is this one in particular. We're at the airport one off of 122nd. In this particular store, there are eight other Goodwill stores that feed it. So that means that in about four to five weeks, if your great shirt, and I don't know why it wouldn't sell, but if it doesn't sell, it'll come here okay. where it's sold in amount. If it doesn't sell in about three hours, um, it's going to find a home behind the scenes, and I'll show you all about that in a little bit. Okay. So, I mean, your prices are good to start with at any of the retail outlets. No, I'll thank I mean, you. It's, but, you know, you have the, the, the boutiques, mm -hmm. which are kind of a newer introduction. Yeah. That are more the higher end, right. know, the regular stores, and then you have the discount areas like this. We do, and we have people here that are really clever. I think the, the sharpest of the thrift shopper comes to an outlet because you've got to put some muscle in it. You have to really have good blinders on to know specifically what you want. It is 80 to 85% of the folks that come here resell those items in their own for-profit stores, their own online stores or platforms. They resell items and they tell us that they either supplement or make their living reselling what they find. So that says a great deal about value. And right. let's talk about right. what we so, have you know, here. For, yeah? for us gardeners that are out in our yard right. down, we're looking for you know, tools and pots and containers and yard right. art. And you have all of that in your stores. We, we have all of that. And please know that each of these outlets have multiple stores feeding seven days a week. So what you have in front of you is a collection of things that honestly did not take me a long time to amass because the donors will provide. Right. We have patio art. We have your hedger. We have a retractable rake, which I thought was a really good find. This container for compostables is like brand new. It's oh, never yeah. been used. And there are some items that are by the piece um, because they'd be heavy by the pound. Sure, sure. Like, you know, like, like a lawnmower, lawnmower right. for example. No, too, what's different about an outlet, it is as is. So in a regular store, you can return it within two weeks for an in-store credit. Here, you got to take your chance, right? right? Because it is the last roundup and it's at a really deep, deep discount. But the pieces of furniture are by the piece. Didn't cost much. I thought this would be adorable on a patio or in, right. in a garage setting. My favorite piece is I love the little school desk. Oh, right. yep. And that's wrought iron that is deep, heavy walnut. It folds up. I thought that would be the cutest little bench in your garden oh, or to hold your pots with your beautiful flowers and your succulents. And then right next to it is such a cute little, you can't really figure out what this is. Um, because it doesn't have a way for water to come, but we think might it might be a bird feeder, maybe. You can fill it up with water, right. certainly, or you can put your hens and chicks in it, ground cover, be so cute, right? Right, because that, that's um, kind of the rage now, is you know people are finding these, these interesting containers that have a lot of character, and there's a lot of differences yeah. to them, and turning them into a, you know, a planter or a container that you wouldn't think of otherwise. Well, and honestly, it draws attention to your good work. It draws right. attention to what nature has brought us, and it just, I think, when you can put your signature on something, it's so right. much more fun to do so. And it's really good, I think, to 
pay attention to what planet Earth already has. Right. So instead of keeping things, um, we, we work really hard to keep things out of the landfill. Right. That's why outlets exist and we're so grateful to all of our customers and they're really sharp at what they do. If you added everything up, and there are some things by the piece, a lot by the pound, um, we, and as you can see, we have multiple really cool things from your books to the really high end. I don't right. know if you saw the little vases down right. there. Yes. Beautiful Asian inspired vases for your clippings or for your patio par party. Um, add everything together, it's under $141 wow. for everything. And honestly, if, if I think I, we have the nicest neighborhood, we have people dropping things off at our patio or at our front door. Look, I just had some catnip for my cats dropped <laughs> off in a cute little pot. Um, this is a great way to get people involved with their, their summer to be and certainly their spring. It's, call, it's calling everybody outside. Right, we have right. such pretty weather, right? So tell me a little bit more uh, about the behind the scenes that most people don't get to see. Right, these tables go away every three hours because our folks are really clever about finding value in these bins. So um, in about three hours, we roll them back where they go to collections. Collections is a place, very interesting, very busy all the time. It is a place where it's as many as 11 categories. We separate items for our recycle and our salvage partners. About 60 this year. And they have their own business practice in which they sell those items that nobody wanted to take home. So it's one more way of not only bringing revenue into our free job programs to, to keep them at no cost for the community, but it's a great way of keeping things out of the landfill. And um, we are busy at all times separating those things and from from wiring to toys to books to shoes, we're part of eCycle. Have you ever heard of yeah, eCycle? Yeah, yeah eCycle is really cool contract. Uh, we're both eCycle in Oregon and eCycle in Washington, and that means your electronics. If you have that big old TV with the I call the the butt in the back, right, right? right? Or the console TV that's in your garage that Grandma had, give it to us. It doesn't have to work. And okay. it won't go in anybody's landfill in any part of the world because that's part of eCycle. It's Which about it? doing the right thing with the planet and finding those partners, those salvagers and recyclers who also do the right thing by contract. So that's a really good yeah. way to know that your good intention, if it doesn't find a home here in, in Oregon or Southwest Washington, it's going to find a place of use and not disuse and, and not ruin for, for anybody in any part of the country right. when it comes to eCycle. Well, good. Yeah, well, Goodwill does so many good things for the community, and, you know, and there's a Goodwill in your neighborhood near you. So make sure you go down, visit a store, bring your creativity, find something that you can use in your garden, keep it out of the landfill, and get a great bargain at the same time. So you know, we appreciate being out here with you. No, oh, thank you so much for coming. Judy, do you think they grow Portuguese laurel in Portugal? Uh, Ryan, I think we're going to find out, and you can too. You know, for more information on the Garden Time Tour to Spain and Portugal, go to GardenTime.tv. And you can find out more about today's show on GardenTime.tv. Ryan and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Garden Time is on the road again. Join us as we tour Portugal and Spain in the fall of 2021. We start in Lisbon where we tour the palaces and gardens of royalty. Then we make our way across Spain with visits to the Mesquita and the world famous Alhambra. Enjoy the sights, sounds and tastes of Andalusia before we end up in exciting Madrid. Local transportation, hotels and 26 of your meals are included. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information and we'll see you in Europe. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.